A very good morning to you all again, and welcome to Dr. Vipin's Biotech and Bioinformatics Classroom. Uh, we are into the sixth lecture in Python, and today we are going to do what is known as loops in Python. So loops are a common feature of any programming language, and uh, whether it is Perl, Python, R, loops allow you to do something iteratively. So if there is an operation that has to be performed multiple times, right? So that is where loops come in, and uh, we start with taking a very common and simple example and then of course we move on to do uh, slightly more complex loops and then of course uh, in the next next lecture we'll talk about nested loops which is a loop within a loop right so let's get started and we start again with google collab if you don't know what is google collab you can go back to my lecture number one this is python underscore one here introducing python with google collab and uh, have a look here uh, the advantage with google collab is that you don't need to install anything you can start straight away just by signing in. We have come some distance in Python. We started introducing Python in Google Collab. Then we moved on to looking at the Python data types and we talked about two basic data types in Python, that is numeric and string. Then we uh, looked at string operations in lecture number three. And then we also looked at the data structure called list in lecture number four and the operations that can be performed on it. In lecture number five, we looked at uh, how to calculate the DNA composition in terms of what is the number of ATGNC in a given DNA, and also calculated the GC content. So this was basically a demonstration of how Python can be used to analyze simple biological data. So let's get started and we'll talk about the for loop today. There are other loops as well, like while loop, which we'll be talking of in a later lecture. And as you can see, the channel is doing really well. We got more around 5,000 views in the last 28 days. And if you look at the uh, last 365 days, we are well over 20,000 views, 21,205. And overall, we are uh, approaching 25,000 views. For that, I seek your cooperation as well. If you like the lecture, please leave a comment as well and also share it in your peer groups. Let's get started and we start with Python with Vipin. So here you are. Welcome to Dr. Vipin's Biotech and Bioinformatics Classroom. Uh, today, we talk about loops. Loops are inbuilt functions in all programming languages to perform an action iteratively. If you want to perform the same action multiple times, you may change the value of the variables that you're putting in, but the action remains the same. There are two main types of loops in uh, Python, the for loop and the while loop. There are other loops as well, but most commonly what you use is either a for loop or a while loop. Today, we talk about the for loop, right? So uh, what example, while I was thinking of uh, what example should I give you, one example that I remember from my childhood days is that whenever we did some mischief in the class, we were asked to write down, I'm sorry, and I will not repeat it again. And the teacher would tell us that you have to write 50 times or 100 times, and it had to be done during the lunch break. You could not miss any class to write this. If you were asked to do the same thing in Python, what you can do is you can use a for loop, right? Remember, what you have to do is to write 100 times, I am sorry, and I will not repeat it again, right? So what you do is you take a loop, a for loop, and you define that you have to run it for 100 times. The syntax or how to define that a loop has to be run for 100 times is here. You say for, so this is indicating that you're using the for loop. I, I, it could be anything, A, B, C, D, E, F, any variable name. Uh, I by convention is used most commonly, but in case you're using another loop, you would want to use another variable link. So you say for I, in range, right? So this is defining how many times you're going to run your loop. And in range, you give your argument for the number of times you want to run the loop. In this case here, within round brackets, you say 100. And then you want to indicate that your command statement is over by putting up a colon, right? So when you put up a colon, and in the next line, you give your operation, it will automatically get indented, right? So if you see the print is one tab next to the start of for. So this indicates that this is a sub part of the original for loop, right? Here you are. So now you say print and in round brackets and in double quotes, because this is going to be a string and it is going to be printed as such. You say, I am sorry, I will not repeat it again. Close the double quotes, close the round brackets, right? And then you run it. So this is all going to take you two, three minutes and you have run it a hundred times, right? So let's make it 10 so that you can count that actually comes to 10. So here you are, we save it again and we run it again, right? So we, we run it again, you say run and here you are. So this is your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9 and 10 right so you have done it 10 times so this is easy right so let's let's see how we can use four for a more constructive purposes rather than finishing a punishment let's say you want to generate a number series from 1 to 10 so so what you do is you say for i in range, right? So this is basically your statement. And now within round brackets, you give two arguments. First, the starting point. So you are printing your numbers from one. And then the last is your finishing point. And the finishing point has to be n plus one. So if you want to print numbers until 10, you must give an 11 here, right? So what will happen is uh, when the loop runs for the first time, the value of i will be one. Then when it runs for the second time, the value of i will be 2. Likewise, when it runs for the 10th time, the value of i will be 10. It will run 10 times and give you the values that you are printing here. So you say print i, that is going to print the value. So for every cycle of the for loop, the value of i is going to change. And it starts from 1, second cycle becomes 2, third cycle becomes 3, fourth cycle becomes 4, tenth cycle becomes 10th. So let's run this and see what you get here. So here you are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? So this is, again, simple. You're generating a number series from 1 to 10 by simply giving a for loop where you say for i in range and you define on range the starting point and the finishing point plus 1, right? And then you say print i. Now let's say, uh, let's put it to a little more complicated use and a little more mathematical use. So let's say now you want to generate a table of any number that is given by the user and up till any point that you want to, right? But let's say you're generating a table of five and you're generating it until five into 20. We ask the user to give the input of the number whose table he wants to generate. So you say number equals two, and then you say int because you want to convert whatever is input, which is by default a string into an integer, right? So you say number is equal to int and then in round brackets input, and then in round brackets, you give the message that you want to display to the user so that he's able to input the number he wishes to generate the table of. So here you are, uh, number is equal to int input and round brackets and double quotes, submit the number whose table you wish to generate. And then you close your quote and the round brackets. So let's run this now. Here you are, you want to now and put a number. So let's say we know the table of five. So we'll put a five here, right? For experiment and then press enter. Then this one here is basically to ask you to put, input the number of times, the maximum number that until which you want the table to be run. So the limit to which you wish to generate the numbers or the multiples is what is asked here. So let's say we want to generate until 20. So five ones are five. 5 twos are 10 and 5 into 20 are 100. Right? So we want to generate um, the entire multiplication table of 5 from 5 into 1 to 5 into 20. That is what I've given. So you press enter here. So this value is coming in times. So times represents the, the final uh, position until which you want the table to be generated. So first, of course, is uh, how many times the loop will run. So the loop will run as many times as is the value of times here, right? So you say for i in range, and you start with 1 because 5 into 1 is what you start with. And then you go on to times plus 1 because it will stop one short of the actual value of times. So if you put in 20 here, it will stop at 19. So therefore, times plus 1 means it will also give you the 5 into 20 value now. And then you put up a colon here. So this is the syntax for i in range, uh, round brackets open. Then you give your first argument that is going to be the, uh, the starting position. And then of course, it's going to be the finishing position plus one so that you get all the values until the multiples of 20 of five, right? So here you are and you put up a colon here. Then you say table is equal to number asterisk i, right? So number is five. This is the uh, the input that it given. And then asterisk i, i will have values of one in the first time, two in the second run, three in the third run, four in the fourth run, 20 in the 28th run. Then of course you have printing and while printing you say print uh, the number. So we, we follow the notation that is usually given in the table. So five into one equals to five. This is what you're printing here. So you say print number, number has a value of five as of now, comma, asterisk, so number into 
i i will have a values of 1 to 20 depending on what step of the loop you are in and then you put in an equal to here and then you give the final value that you determine from this which is table here right so this is uh, how you're going to generate your table so let's uh, multiply and then correlate how this works out so here you are you run this and you get your table so here what is happening is for i in range 1 to 21 is what you have so the first time in the table runs the value of i is 1 the value of number is 5 so 5 into 1 equals to 5 right then the next time when the loop runs i is incremented by 1 so now the value of i is 2 so 5 asterisk 2 equals to 10 then the next time the value of i is incremented by 1 again so it becomes 3 the number is 5 so 5 asterisk 3 15 then it becomes uh, the value of i becomes 4 in the next iteration the value of number is still 5 so 5 and into 4 equals to 20 and so on and so forth right so this is how it works out so this is how you can generate a table of numbers so let's uh, do a more complex table something that we don't really usually remember so let's say uh, i want to so let me close this and let me close this as well right and let me close this as well and let's say i want to generate a table of 17. so let's generate a table of 17 right and when we were uh, we had mugged up tables until 20 but of course now we're getting old and we're forgetting and also we're not using our brains enough so one way of doing that would be whenever you go to your provisional store to take some ration uh, do the totaling yourself right and that that would help you you know keep those neurons active and help you also remember and also you know increase the speed at which you can calculate uh, when we were young we had uh, some very good human calculators so there was there's a friend of mine called anuj and i'm sure you have heard about shakuntala devi who was the fastest human calculator in the world today right? and recently there was a movie also in her name right so let's uh, get back here and talk more about it so let's generate a table of something that we don't really remember so let's say you're generating a table of 17 so let me run this part and give 17 as input right 17 and you press enter now let's also say you want to generate until 20 times 17 so again you run this part and you say you want to generate the table until 17 into 20 right so this is what you do here and now we come to our for loop so it says for i in range and this is one you have already defined it and this is times plus one which is 20 plus one which is 21 right put your colon then here is where you are calculating the actual multiple so table equals to number asterisk i number is 17 i is going to change for every iteration of the loop so first time when the loop runs the value of i is 1 the second time the value of i is uh, 2 3 4 so 5 6 7 8 20th time it is 20 and then you are printing the table the way the table is normally represented so you have the number uh, 17 into i will be variable 1 2 3 4 5 6 is equal to the final value that get that you get after the multiplication comes up here right so let's run it one more time here you are so this is your table of 17 until 20. So 17 into 1 is 17, 2s are 34, 3s are 51, 4s are 68, 5s are 85, 6s are 102, 7s are uh, 17, 7s are 119, and then 17, 20s are 340. Right? So this is how you generate a table using a for loop. So this is a very intuitive example of uh, teaching a for loop. Uh, you are generating a table taking an input from the user of the number whose table you want to generate and also the final limit up to which you want to generate your table. So now let's say you want to generate, uh, you know, all odd numbers from 1 to 10, right? So you now you know how to generate a number series, but there is an additional statement here that is to check whether the number is odd or not. And the simplest way of doing that is to check for whether the number is divisible by 2 or not, right? So what we are going to check here is whether the remainder after division by 2 is equal to 0 or not. So we say for x in range 1, 11, because we're going to generate odd numbers from 1 to 10. So this is so the second value is n plus 1. So this is 11. And then you put up a colon indicating that this is a for loop that is starting. And then when you move on to the next line, automatically we 
cursor will move one tab position inside, right? So now here, what you're doing is you're wanting to check if x percent two is not equal to zero. You're printing the odd numbers, which means you are checking for whether the division by two leaves a, 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 a remainder of zero or not. If it is not equivalent to zero, then you are going to print your number here, right? So this is going to print X. So simple, you are generating a number series from one to 10. And then for every step you're checking, whether the number is divisible by two, if the remainder is zero, you're not printing it. If the remainder is not equal to zero, you're printing the number within the loop. Here you are, right? So this one here, X percent two is basically to check the remainder when you divide X by two, right? And this one here, the exclamation mark and equal to represents what is known as not equal to. So the left side of the equation is not equal to the right side of the equation. If you were to, let's say, check for even numbers, which you're going to do next. So you would have said X percent two is equal to zero, right? All right. So let's run this and generate the odd numbers. So you run this here and you get one, three, five, seven, and nine, right? So this is your odd numbers between one to 10. So let's say now you want to generate numbers until one to 500. So this is what you do here, 500. And then you change the final range value here. You say 501. And now when you run it, you're going to generate all odd numbers between one to 501. You run this now. And here you are. These are your odd numbers between one to 500. So now let's say you want to also generate uh, even numbers from one to 500. So let me just uh, move on there. And this is long. So here you are. You want to generate even numbers from one to 500, right? So let me change this number to 501. Remember N plus one, 501. And here what you're checking for is again, so you first generate a number for X in range and in round brackets, one comma 501 colon. And then you are checking for whether the division by two leaves a remainder of zero or not, right? So here you are, you're checking if X percent two is double equal to. So you are not assigning a value here. You're actually checking the left side of the equation or the right side of the equation, whether the two values are exactly the same or not. So X percent two is equal to zero. And then you put a colon here again. And if this is correct, you are saying print X. So you can see the indenting is following a pattern. So, so for loop is outermost. Then within the for, you're checking for the if condition. And <clears throat> if this condition is true, then you're printing X here. So here you are, you have the even numbers from one to 500. So you have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and so on and so forth until five, zero, zero. Right? So this is your final number inclusive in the list. All right, so we stop here. And uh, in the next lecture, we'll talk more about for loops and we take the context of DNA as a reference and we start from there and we talk about how to calculate the composition of a DNA sequence or a protein sequence using the for loop. Thank you very much. Uh, please do recommend the channel to everybody else. Uh, I understand most of you would have a kind of mental block to programming, but uh, remember my words, uh, if you are in biotechnology, it is all the more important that you know a bit of programming because the data you're going to analyze is going to be huge coming from high throughput machines, mostly next generation sequencing data. And unless you know programming, you will not be able to analyze the high sequence, high the NGS data. So therefore, uh, this is more of a necessary evil if you consider it so. I don't consider it an evil because uh, programming is very in intoxicating, very engrossing. And also it helps to create more memories and more interconnections in the brain. So it also keeps your brain active, right? There is no slogging here. So therefore, uh, I would suggest that uh, you learn and also tell your peers to learn. Like, subscribe and share. Let's grow together. And the motto for the channel is let's grow together. So let's grow together and uh, let's be partners in growth. Thank you very much.